his mom here and Luke is here with Alligator Alligator and we have our first piece. Hey. Welcome to this week's piece. Now this is a darling little vanity that was given to me. And it is just, oh man, I love it so much. So it obviously is in a bit of a shape and that's fine because we like to fix things. So I'm just gonna go over everything. It has all the original hardware, which is great. Even the original wheels, the little casters, they're wooden ones. They still work, which just cracks me up because some of them are not perfectly round anymore. There was a lot of nail polish on this, so that was kind of a struggle to get off, but I just used a blade and kind of scraped out as much as I could. And then the rest will get sanded off. Um, you can see the finish was incredibly easy to remove just because it was already essentially removing itself. And then for the most part, the wood on top was okay but as you can see there's this huge split here I was seeing how much movement I could get into it there was none so what that means is I can't do a glue up and put it back together because it's it, there's no movement in the wood to be able to clamp it back together it's gonna stay open so that means I need to fill it um, and at this point I wasn't sure what I was gonna do to the top so I left it I went onto the drawers, tried getting off more nail polish, and yeah, that was kind of a pain. I ended up hitting it with the chisel and that worked the best for the inside of the drawers, just because it was a smaller space and it was really hard to get into. And of course my sander with the vacuum attachment <laughs> wouldn't fit, so that was exciting as well. Since I was already going with everything, I just went around and gave the entire drawer box a sand to smooth everything out and get anything off the sides and back and bottom. The bottoms were just a little bit rough, so I sanded those smooth so they'd glide a little better. I just love this hardware. It's obviously original, has the square nuts, and this was actually string that they had wrapped around to kind of work as a washer in the back. Usually it is spider webs that I find in there, but this time it was a uh, string. So the top middle section of this desk had some water damage. So I'm just hitting it with some oxalic acid. There's quite a bit. Um, I ended up doing two rounds. And so this stuff gets, once it's dry, it gets very crystally and bleaches your wood out. You have to go over the entire surface. You can't just do spots like wherever. I couldn't have just done it in the center section. You can see right there where the water damage is. You have to do the entire thing or else you'll see like the line of demarcation. So you have to do the whole thing. Again, I did two rounds and it still wasn't enough to get those out, which was kind of a bummer because I thought I was just going to try and leave the wood natural. I just I don't know, I just really liked it. Um, and then obviously I did the oxalic acid inside the drawers because they had a whole bunch of ink stains in them. And this for the most part did a really, really great job on the drawer bottom. So I'm really happy that I went that route. Now, as you can see, as we're going through taking apart the piece, there's a bit more damage. So just a chunk taken out here. Um, I'm gonna paint these so That'll just be an easy repair as filler. And this one was kind of a bummer. I wish I had been able to fix this originally. I mean, it was not fixed very well. And if I were to take it apart, I would just damage it more. So it's also gonna need filler. Um, for this, I'm using the Rock Hard Water Putty, the Durham's. I love this stuff. It's It does, it dries so, so hard and it's essentially odorless and you just use a little bit of water and you can do it to whatever consistency you need. And so for here, I'm just mixing it up and filling in this huge trench that was left behind from the original repair. 
and then I'll go through and scrape out all the lines to make sure that it's not blocking any of the pattern in the wood. I will let it set up for just a bit and then I'll go into the scraper and scrape off any of the excess because as I said this stuff does get really hard and it's a bit of a pain to sand off sometimes if it's too thick on top. So this just makes the sanding later on a bit easier. You don't want to scrape it fully flush before it sets up that little bit. This is still movable but it's not fresh anymore. So if you scrape it off right after you lay it down um, it'll kind of maybe go below the surface and you don't want that. You want it to be sitting a little bit proud. So that's why I wait till it sets up just a bit. And this was my first time seeing the mirror and I just, I loved it. So it was very easy to remove. I just took off that, um, top decorative piece and the mirror slid right out, which was awesome. Got it sanded and prepped. And then I went to work on this side that was missing the veneer. That was kind of a bummer, but... I had an idea in mind, so I just went ahead and removed all of it. And then I gave a little bit of attention to the casters because they needed it. They were very squeaky. <laughs> I'm going to put this on the side so that I could get into this section here easily. I gave it a good sand so there were no high points going on. And then at this point I've decided on a raised stencil and I'm just going to do that. I had two old paints that were really, really low and I just mixed some baking soda in with them. Um, that's one of my favorite ways to add texture. My original idea was to use this anaglypta wallpaper. It's one of my favorites and it would have been perfect. It would have had all the texture and I wouldn't have had to have done a messy race stencil. I love race stencils, but let's be real. They're, they're messy. So what I'm doing here now, since I can't use the anaglypta wallpaper, because that little sheet that I just showed you was all that I had left. And I thought I had like half a roll left. So that was kind of a bummer. So anyways, I had a scrap piece of wallpaper from another project and I'm just going to use this with actual wallpaper paste this time. I know it's weird that I'm using actual wallpaper paste. Um, but that's just because of this surface here is a little textured and I want to use the, this wallpaper that I'm using is pre-pasted and I'm also using wallpaper paste just to make sure it's extra stuck on there because I'm also using this to give it a bit more rigidity because those boards aren't as stiff as if they had had the veneer still on them. So I'm just using this as a backdrop for the ray stencil to go onto this side. I'm not worried about it being perfect. I just don't want anything to go through those cracks or to have any cracks on there. And because this is going to be the base for my ray stencil, I don't want all that pattern in the background. So I'm just going to give this a coat of white. Could have been any color, didn't really care. I was just putting something down to block the print just in case it showed through later on and because I did white on this side it meant that I also did white on the other side just for consistency's sake. Waiting for that to dry I'm going to go ahead and cast a couple molds. Um, I'm just going to use paper clay on this because I'm going to go for a very rustic cottagey type feel and I think clay does that better than resin. I also love this clay because you can demold it immediately. You just put it in and take it out and you're ready to go. So I did a few of these, figured out my placement and glued them on. I glue them on while they're still wet and I'm also not afraid to paint them while they're still wet. I do let them get a little bit of a crust before I paint them, but if you're gentle, you can paint them wet. You might get a little cracking later, but again, that's the style of this piece, so I wasn't worried about it if that happened. As you can see, I've moved the vanity onto its back 
just so that the molds can be drying on there and I don't have to worry about any of them sliding down the piece. So while those are setting up, the white paint on that side's dry, so I can go in with my ray stencil. So I'm literally just using a brush for this. Sometimes you'll see me use a spatula. I don't really care a lot about the tools that I use so long as they work. So I've got a brush. This is an older one um, that I don't care about so much. You probably don't want to use a brush that you absolutely love because you could potentially ruin it. Um, but so I just dip it in and smooth it on and it's giving all kinds of texture. I'll go every which way with the brush. I'm not too careful about it. I do like to make sure that I get it up to the edge. I can't stand when there is a gap. I never put the stencil perfectly fitted inside because I don't like that little gap that you get from ray stencil to nothing. So I move it up and sometimes you'll get high points in that. I don't care. I would rather have high points than have a gap. So um, you can actually take a spatula and scrape off the high points or sand them off later. But I just do this, I did this side, and then while this one was drying, I went over and did the other side. And it really didn't take too long to dry because it's just baking soda. And then I'd kind of work back and forth as each one dries. Once I get the stencils done, I'm just going around the entire piece and kind of sporadically adding in texture. You could do this all over the piece. I kind of like it in just random mishmash places where I'm not too worried about it. I did put the drawers in so that I could make sure that the texture was kind of matching up when they were on later. And of course, this is one of those parts where it's really easy to let Lucas help, so I do. Anytime that there's a point in a project where, you know, it doesn't have to be meticulous or something that's detailed, I always let him do it because he loves it and he just feels like he's doing such a great job helping. Now I'm going to go over everything with the color sea glass. This is one of my most favorite colors. It's perfect. And it's gonna be the base. So then I'm gonna have seal gray, rose petal, wisteria, and woodland harbor. And those are going to be our blended colors. And that is the amount of paint I'm going to be using on the brush for this. So I'm starting out almost dry brushing and then I will spritz the tiniest amount of water only on my brush, not on the piece and swirl it out anywhere that I can't get it to fully blend out. And I'm kind of having a pattern, but not really. So on the left side, I've got the gray blended up. And then on the right side, I've got Woodland Harbor. And then I'll make sure that that gray matches around the corner. And then the Woodland Harbor matches around its corner. And that's kind of how, how I go. Um, the legs got a little bit of everything just because I wanted to not have them too solid of colors and then the pink I kept on the outside corners and the purple I kind of did on the insides and same technique all over everything I've got this huge blending brush I'm using barely any paint and I'm just swirling it on and then once I get to the edges I can add a little bit more water and as I add a little bit more water it blends out really really soft so when you're doing this kind because I'm really kind of aggressively blending it as you can tell by the way I'm holding the brush, because there's so much texture on this, I need to make sure I can get in there. That base layer is super, super dry. You don't want to do this when there is any kind of moisture in it at all, because you run the risk of pulling it up. So the inside portions of this, on the sides, I'm leaving just the sea glass because I'm going to stencil those as well. They just won't get ray stencil. So I'm making sure I don't get any blended paint on the inside sides.
Once I get the blends figured out, I always go back in and make sure that the inside parts of the drawers match as well because I think it looks weird when they're in different color. So you may have seen this before. This is my little pot of poly mixed with uh, glazing dusts. Um, I keep this, I usually, you use so little that even with that teeny tiny pot lasts me forever. So I'm going in with that. It's a ton of different glazing dust. There's gold, silver, copper, all the metallics are in there. And it, like I said, just mix with a little bit of poly. I have a detail brush and I'm going in, I'm going to be filling in all of the details on this piece. So I'm going in all the recesses and then I will just lightly touch the high points on the little appliques that we put on there. Now I took the same stuff and just dumped it in a lid and then I'm going to take my large brush and just kind of run it over the raised stencil. I am barely, barely touching this just so it doesn't get a ton in the background and it mostly hits the raised portions of the stencil. And then I'm again just like almost dry brushing this on the textured portions of this. So it's not going everywhere, but it is going just kind of randomly. And then I took the same stencil and used the same glazing dust poly mix and just did that on the insides. And then I went in and actually sanded it back some so that it also looked a little bit more imperfect. And then I'm going to seal the entire thing with the spa urethane. Again, I'm just using this because it's what I have on hand. It's not my favorite, but it's it's good. I actually really like it for protection because it is it is a great protector. I'm just not a huge fan of semi-gloss, and that's what this is. So there's that. Um, this actually turned out really, really well because of all the texture on it. I felt like that you couldn't tell that it was a semi-gloss finish, which I think was to my benefit. Um, you'll see me using a small detail brush with this. That's because there are so many cracks and crevices and everything when I'm rolling this on. Um, it gets stuck in those little areas, so I'll go in with a detail brush and clean those up. And I've recently started using the roller again. I haven't used a roller in such a long time, but man, it is fast. It also leaves texture, so keep that in mind. <laughs> The hardware, I actually just went and cleaned up with some vinegar and soap and water. I didn't scrub them back too much because I like them having a little bit of the patina on them. Again, the top was just a little too damaged still, so I went in with just an oak stain. This is very light. And then I had to use my melting waxes to fill in the gaps on the top. I was kind of bummed. I have a ton of colors in the melting waxes but I could not get one that was perfect enough so this one would have to do and it actually looks it looks pretty good now that it's finished but as I was getting it on it took me a while to work this in and get it just in the cracks and melt it back so this actually took longer than what I'm showing here just because it gets a little bit boring but I went back through um, the little heating wand that comes with this thing does work great but the batteries die incredibly fast and it's annoying so I just heat up a little putty knife and use that because I have a fireplace right behind me and I just set that on the fireplace and melt the waxes with that and then it comes with a ton of different tools that you can get in and scrape everything off with and buff everything out so this is a really cool kit and I do recommend it 
So I'm here and taking my furniture polish. I'm just going to refresh the drawers and do all the glides with it to make sure everything slides smoothly. Then I get the mirror put back in. It was super easy. It just slid right back into place and locked itself in. And then I'm gonna take the same furniture polish and go over the top of the vanity. And I'm doing it with a very, very fine steel wool. And this will help polish it up and it gives it so much more protection than just poly alone. Oh, hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got our finished piece. She's a lovely little thing, um, gifted to me by Donica, who is amazing because this is the second piece of furniture that she has uh, given to me. She's incredible. So thank you again, Donica. I appreciate it. Um, she had messaged me and said, hey, I have this old vanity if you'd like to come get it. And I was like, who doesn't want an old vanity? So I showed up and it was amazing. This lovely like art deco awesomeness. And obviously I just fell in love. So I wanted to keep kind of the art deco vibe, but also give it that like grungy elegance, kind of cottagey situation that I just adore. So that's what we did. Um, you could have filled in all of this stuff if you wanted to get a more like a clean front and you wanted to lose the art deco style. Um, but when I refinish pieces, I a lot of times will try and make sure that if it ever needed to go back to its original state, it can. So that's kind of my goal when I'm redoing these pieces. I want them to be something that somebody will absolutely love right now, but also in the future, if it ever needs to go back to its original state, it can absolutely go back to that place without harming it at all. Now, of course, we had to take off um, this panel over here because it was missing a piece. Um, so that can easily be replaced with another piece of veneer. It would be hard to match them, but it's fine. That's what stains for, right? Um, anyways, but this quick fix worked out really well and I'm very pleased with it. I would do it again, um, mostly because we did the textured, the raised stencil on it. So it's hard to mess up a raised stencil. Anyways, I hope you guys love this. I am going to be doing the great junk hunt. Um, this one is on March 17th and it is in Sacramento, California. I'm very excited. <laughs> Um, it is, it'll be like the first big market that I go to, that I've gone to. I've gone to a smaller one before and I loved it. It was so much fun getting to, um, just meet people. It, I don't know. It was just, it was very fun. So I'll be there for that. And if any of you happen to be in that area, Sacramento, California on the 17th and the 18th, I would love to see you or meet you or whatever. I know that's probably a stretch, <laughs> but just in case, I thought I would let you guys know and then I'll do a post about it as well. But yeah, thank you so much for following along. Thank you for watching and subscribing and liking and all the things that you guys do all the time, leaving your amazing comments. I'm just, I'm very grateful to you. So I will get you some photos and see you next week.